Quicksand, BJ Bland. What's going How's on, up, man? Bro? Uh, not a lot. How about yourself? Good, good, man. Uh, it's been a while since we spoke, but uh, I know you've been busy, and uh, and that's all you can be, right, in this time of being a prospect. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Just trying to stay busy. Now, um, I want to go back to the rough patch, you know, that you had in 2017, 2018. You know, you had a f- few fights fall out. You know, you went on a on a, a on a short skid. Talk about that time and 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 grinding and and uh, and not really getting the results that you wanted to get. Yeah, it was like it was pretty tough because it was right at that period where I sort of like um, put my life on hold to like really pursue pers- pursue this goal, mine and my wife's um, life. And yeah, things didn't really pan out smoothly at the start. So it just sort of took a fair bit of, um, I know, like just just faith and, and just trying to like grind through it and, and believing that it'll happen. But um, I, feel, I feel now I've sort of overcome that um, patch and it's starting to 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 change and I'm I'm hitting a hitting a good patch. It's it's a strange thing, momentum. Like when it's against you, it can be like I feel like impossible to break, but when it's with you, you feel like nothing can stop you sort of thing city kickboxing of course they have a great support system and i'm pretty sure they were behind you the whole time you know no matter what outside of that you know who 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 was next to you who was supporting you to kind of push you through because you need to have people outside of the the gym to kind of help you out a little bit right yeah definitely definitely uh my wife my wife is the main person she's like she yeah, believed in me 100 percent, and she's made probably Probably more sacrifices for this than me myself, even. So like, that's been the the main person that sort of really believed in me and kind of felt like I had like an obligation to sort of do my best and, and succeed. And then I also um, my my team teammates, uh, my old coach, so my two best friends, my two old coaches back home in Hawkes Bay, um, they like fully believed me too, and they're like, ah, oh, like don't worry bro it'll happen and like kind of told me about or not told me but sort of remind me about like heaps of fighters have gone through that patch like Cormier and stuff like that you know guys are 30 struggling and then it just happened so yeah that that support was huge well you know you came back after dropping three and you got a good good win over Abel Brights talk about that fight last October and and getting that victory and how it felt to finally get over that hump yeah, yeah, it's like that thing, like I was just said before, like the momentum, like I felt like if I could get that win, the momentum would be on my side. Abel was like a tough opponent, like a legit guy, you know, so if you beat him, you're sort of in the upper echelon of the guys in Australia, and and I knew sort of I could beat him, but I knew it wouldn't be a walk in the park, so it's just given me um, heaps of confidence, so I kind of feel after I've beating him there's not really anyone in Australia in the regional scene that I'm really need to sort of uh, like fear I guess like I feel I can compete and beat any of them going through all of that did you did you have to come over a lot of doubt in your mind or was was there no doubt that you just need to kind of get in back into that cage and compete no nah, there was like there was definite doubt like um, especially w- one of the losses was a knockout loss, and sort of never really been like clean knocked out before. So that that was like probably the most doubt I've had in any stage of my career. It was just like, whoa, like, do I have a glass chin? Like, can I sort of stand up? Or are all shots gonna kind of put me down now? Because I got sort of the fight before that, I got like dropped. But, but not knocked out, but I'd never really been dropped before as well. And then to be dropped and then the next flight be like clean, stone cold knocked out was like, that was huge doubt. That was probably like the, yeah, the most kind of, con, not concerned, but the most time I've really felt like, not fragile, but, but like a bit vulnerable sort of thing. Yeah, well, you know, throughout the years, you've been, get, you've been in your own training camps, but also you've been part of other guys training camps especially you know dan hooker and israel and, and everybody else that's at city kickboxing rather than you know like some guys they're only at these small gyms and you come from a smaller gym and you get to this yep. big gym 
and you got everybody going through camp all the time. What what benefits is that for you to just be part of camps and not really your your own training camp, but other people's training camps too? Um, it, it means like the intensity at the gym never dies down. You know, like you never sort of uh, like like I'm a, I'm a really competitive person and I and I take not results in training, but performance and training performances and training to heart. So like at always at some point in the gym, like someone's has a fight lined up so they're kind of peaking so i always feel like i want to be like able to push and, and, and compete with them like i never turn up there's never a session where i turn up and feel like oh, i'll take it easy if i get my ass kicked i get my ass kicked kind of thing you know so like it just means the standards always high like there's no holidays no sort of days or points where everyone buttons off the coaches are always there there's always a full room and the intensity is always high do you see yourself lately when you go to the you know when you go to the gym like kind of looking for whoever's going whoever's in the fight camp to kind of like go help them out do you see yourself doing that just automatically um yes and no like um there's not i don't really particularly look for anyone there's like i have guys who i uh prefer to and, and enjoy training with guys sort of like similar weight to me and that but um I don't really like try and pick anyone out in particular. Sometimes I get like picked out because I sort of being a southpaw who likes with, with a good good fitness base who likes the pressure like they can kind of be like a, a needed skill set for some of the boys when they're prepping. But yeah, if, if I get cho- chosen to um, help someone for their fight, I'm, I'm more than happy. But I don't particularly like look for them. Now, for this upcoming fight on February 22nd, big weekend in Auckland. You know, you got the UFC there the next day. Um, Eternal MMA 50, you're the main event. Um, it must be good to be the main event, right? Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Particularly um, because it's at home. I haven't fought at home for probably, it'll be coming up four years. So, yeah, it, it feels really cool. I'm, I'm, like, stoked. I'm excited. Training camp for this fight. Has there been a training camp? Is there any difference for you, you know, outside of camp and in camp? Yeah, the intensity is high, but your your routine changes slightly. Mm-hmm. So, um, like, we have specific conditioning sessions that you do when you have a fight coming up, but only when you're having a fight coming up. If you do them all the time, you won't get the sort of the benefits from them. So just our schedule changes slightly. Um, the intensity is up just a little bit more in the sessions. And obviously, like, um, when you don't have a fight, there might be, like, uh, something else come up. Like, you might may have other events, which which can take priority. But when uh, a fight's coming up, like, I had a wedding on Saturday and a stag do the weekend before. But, like, they had to work around my training, not, not vice versa. There's no way that you're going to skip training for that. So, yeah, just priorities. And, not, and also... Uh, Watching your weight, which which can play a big factor. You have to bring your weight down come fight time. What is your protocol for that? Do you just control your own diet, or do you have someone come in and help you out? I used to control my own diet, um, and I like I get it done, but I always sort of do it tough. I didn't exactly know what I was doing, but I uh, just kind of guessed, and and I get there in the end. Um, I'm using. Uh, Jordan uh, from the fight dietitian this this camp and man this made a huge difference like uh, my weights I'm more on track now to make lightweight like I'm closer to making lightweight than when I fight at welterweight what I would be at this stage and like the energy feels good I don't get those sort of lows and that so yeah it's the first time using a nutritionist and I couldn't recommend it more your training partners for this camp you know you're getting ready for Ian Blade are you working with anybody in particular or are you just, you know, doing your normal routine? Um, I'm not working with anyone in particular to like emulate Ian Blade, but um, me, Brad and Dan are all fighting on the same weekend. We're all lightweights. We're all like competitive people. So we're like spending a fair bit of time together just going at it. So yeah, that would be like sort of the main guys. And then I have like other regular guys like Bo and that, that I, Always like to train us as well. 
Has has this been the first time where you, Brad and Dan, all are getting ready for a fight together? Almost on, on the same weekend? Nah, so Mel Melbourne was exactly the same. So this is oh, this is like right. Groundhog Day and that that was like <laughs> one one of the like most enjoyable camps and events um that I've ever had. So it's like I I feel pretty lucky to be able to do it again straight away. So it's cool. It's cool when there's a good group of us all fighting at a similar time. It's like uh, training doesn't drag. It feels like like the chemistry and the atmosphere is always upbeat. The the personalities you guys have. You guys all have different personalities. You know, do you feed off that? Do you feed off the different personalities that you guys have? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, yeah, we all kind of like have our like little quirks and our, and our things. Our habits personality wise and training wise we all sort of feed and and sometimes even pick at it you know you know like some person might not like this so we'll kind of get stuck into them and that but yeah it's good it all, all helps with the team culture heading into this fight with ian blade you know what what is i don't want to say what is the strategy but what do you see in him that is going to pose a challenge for you um does not like I don't look too too particular into it. I, I I like to have the mindset that like it's a fight, kind of anything can happen. So I sort of got to be ready and and wary for everything. So I'm just sort of focusing on myself and making sure that I'm the best I could, best prepared I can be in all the areas, and I'm coming in top shape. But I'm not really overly focused on any single strategy or any of his habits. The there was a lightweight fight that fell through. On the Auckland card and you know a lot of people were pushing for you to hop on but you know sometimes it just doesn't work out that way you just got to focus on your next fight versus Ian Blade but then a lot of people are talking about if you get this win you should be fighting for the eternal belt against Josh Togo how you like that matchup would you fight him like the next month because there's a few events in Australia I think uh, a, I think a month after uh, eternal 50 yeah, yeah, like I, I was pushing to fight him here, but he uh, he had other commitments. I think he fought in, um, I'm, I'm not too sure where it Abu was Dhabi. exactly, but Abu Dhabi, yeah, like la, last weekend, was it? Or, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, that, that, there's a fight I've been calling for since since he won the title. Um, I think, like, he deserves his props. Mar Martinez was, like, a highly regarded prospect when when josh fought him i think people kind of thought he was like the next in line for the ufc so mm -hmm. so josh has proved that he's like man like right up there the, the top guys in australia so that, that's who i want to fight and he, he's who i want next for sure yeah i like that uh you're you want to fight you you're chasing the the guys with the belt the guys that are taking you know other guys out because you want to take them out because you want to get into the ufc you know there's a lot of guys that have just won fights and kind of patted their record and got there and, and you see what happens right with those guys yeah 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 exactly they uh you, you can fake it till you make it to an extent but then on the biggest stage you get exposed and if there's any stage i wouldn't want to be exposed on it's it's there you know i'd rather as i have cut my losses and take my learning in the smaller promotions where there's sort of less critique you know, less uh, less eyes on you and that, and then you can make the improvements. And also, like I'm like over thirty now, I've been fighting professionally since two thousand and seven. So like uh, now's not the time to kind of try and like take my time and and do a path. I just got to go and fight the the best guys out there. That's the only way for me. So what is the best case scenario for you? You know, you go in there against Ian Blade. I'm pretty sure you get a quick finish. You you fight for the title and then it's just like okay and now it's, it's it's my path to the UFC right there is that what it is? Yeah, well, to be completely honest, like uh like I jumped at the opportunity when uh, uh Jamie Malaki pulled out to to get in the UFC just because there's like man you don't like you got to try your luck and 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 have your chances but I'm not like particularly set or focused on the UFC to be honest uh. Me and my coach, uh, Doug Viney, have been uh, are, are trying to push and get me into the PFL, which is a, a promotion I'd really like to fight for as well. Like, obviously, you wouldn't say no to the UFC. 
be mad to, but the PFL or a promotion like that appeals just as much, you know? I just want to fight in, in a major promotion sort of thing. $1 million is very appealing. Yeah, fight twice <laughs> in a night, a million bucks. Like, that. yeah, definitely you wouldn't turn that down. Yeah. Uh, one last thing before I let you go, Ben. Um, you know, you've been, like you said, you've been on the grind. You've been fighting since 2007. In 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 the world of combat sports, there's different types of competitors. At this point in your career, would you consider yourself uh, more of a martial artist or do you think yourself more of a prize fighter? Uh, a prize fighter, to be honest. Like, that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the prize. I like, I don't like get into the sort of the spiritual side of things or the like um, that kind of thing. I just like I like to fight, and it's good to get rewarded for fighting. So, yeah. All right, man. Well, February twenty second, Eternal MMA fifty, BJ Bland takes on Ian Blade in the main event, Auckland, New Zealand. Thank you, BJ, for the time and uh, good luck on the fight and good luck on everything that you're doing inside and outside the cage. Thanks, bro. Catch up soon.